Local pharmacists move to assure Barbadians who use high blood pressure drugs. Enterprise Growth Fund praised for its contribution to businesses and the community. And in sports, Guyana Jaguars in a position to push for victory against Barbados Pride in the regional four-day championship at Kensington Oval. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. A very good evening to you with this Sunday, January 6th edition of the CBC Evening News. I'm Ryan Broom in our top story. We start our news tonight with this story just in. The body of a man was found floating in the water around the wharf in Bridgetown this evening. A crowd gathered while Coast Guard and other officials pulled the body from the water. Police investigations are continuing into that matter. In other news now, patients who use that, the popularly prescribed high blood pressure drug Valsartan, which has now been recalled, are being assured there are alternatives available. That message from President of the Barbados Pharmaceutical Society, or BPS, Derek Catlin, who says there's no need for patients to fear they will not get the medication they need. In terms of the formulary, they have, um, they have more than one option when it comes to that to those specific drugs. So in a case like that, it's not an issue. They have an alternative that is readily available on the formulary. So that is one of the uh, benefits to the Barbados drug formulary. It's not like uh, when it comes to specific medications, in most cases you have two or three options um, for the patient. So in a case like this, um, it will be like a smooth transition in terms of replacing those particular items that have been recalled. And Mr. Catlin also tells CBC News that pharmacists have an extremely important role to play when any drug is recalled. Well, the pharmacists got an essential role to play because, um, well, you know, we are healthcare providers and we deal with... Um, you know, dispensing of medication um, from a day-to-day -day basis. Basically, um, it's just three um, medication that was identified that need to be recalled. And we were given like the lot numbers of the specific um, drugs. So you have to identify those drugs and, and then um, as is our responsibility, we will have to reach out to the patients to indicate that these specific, you know, medication will have to be brought back to the pharmacy. Education Minister Santia Bradshaw says every effort was made to partner with Ross University when the university officials first indicated they were in search of a new home. She says with a mandate from Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley, all hands were on deck to put plans in motion to ensure the university was able to officially start operations this month. She says a partnership will be mutually beneficial. We consider it a privilege to have an accredited private medical school join our academic fraternity. And while the economic impact may be apparent, your commitment to collaborative research and development alongside our local tertiary institutions aligns well with our strategic goal to provide wider access to allied health programs in Barbados. Ross University School of Medicine will certainly contribute to Barbados moving forward the modernization of our community healthcare structures, while at the same time becoming a stronger competitor in the global health education arena. The education minister, however, also had some friendly words of caution. In Barbados, we continue to strive to improve our standards of excellence in systems, accreditation, and expectations. We have come to expect excellence not only for performance in the classroom, but in the character of those who operate within our boundaries. We will hold you to account as we expect you to do the same with us. And our commitments to you as we strive together to achieve the benchmarks which we have both set for ourselves. You are also about to devote an enormous amount of resources, energy and time to producing doctors. And most of your students will complete their courses of study successfully but the true essence of their greatness will be in the skills not found in the medical books. You will influence the level of empathy expressed, 
the respect for life and patient choice, and the importance of being earnest. The Central Bank of Barbados has established a $1 million endowment fund to provide additional financing for the annual Frank Collymore Literary Endowment Awards. Central Bank Governor Cleveston Haynes made the disclosure at the 21st annual awards ceremony. I am delighted to announce that we have established an endowment fund of $1 million to provide the FCLE with additional financing. Of course, we will invest the funds as soon as market conditions allow. The income from the investment will supplement our annual budgeted allocation, enabling the committee to provide greater support and opportunities for writers to enrich the literary arts of Barbados and to sustain it through its adulthood. We envisage that this income flow will support the FCLE's desire to offer scholarships in creative writing at the University of the West Indies and sponsor a literary award in NIFCA for writers of school age. Meantime, Chief Judge of the competition, Esther Phillips, says there's been a decline in entries this year. The Frank Cullimore Literary Endowment saw a significant drop in entries from 62 in 2017 to 44 in 2018. Since we are aware that trends do rise and fall, and that the number of entries could rise again next year, as has happened before, there is perhaps no need for concern about the reduction in numbers at this time. In the meantime, we encourage you to keep sending in your entries to the FCLE. Some good news for motorists. Barbadians will pay slightly less for gas and diesel from midnight. The price of gasoline will drop from $3.71 to $3.60 per litre, a reduction of 11 cents, and the price of diesel will decrease by 17 cents, moving from $3.17 to $3 per litre. The cost of kerosene and liquefied petroleum gas, or LPG, will remain unchanged. Well, the Enterprise Growth Fund Limited is being encouraged to continue its good work across the country. Speaking at the 21st anniversary church service at St. Leonard's Church this morning, Reverend Sonia Hines praised the fund for its contribution to businesses and the community. So too, the Enterprise Growth Fund Limited do continue with the good work, including your educational road trips that you have begun. And our praise for you is that the epiphany season may help you to shed light on our economy in a way that allows it to prosper with your impact and input. Know that the Jesus who came into the world as a human being understands finances and how salvation in, is inextricably linked with our love for each other and our love for God. Now in his address, the fund's CEO, Timothy Simmons, said the fund continues to make a significant economic impact locally. Our funding interventions have assisted in creating and or maintaining 3,000 jobs. It is noted that our funding in the tourism sector has supported the expansion and modernization of approximately 1,200 hotel rooms. 